Sound design tutorial number three, Respers. Today I'm going to show you how to make a respace. The respace comes from Kevin Saunderson's 1988 song, Just One Another Chance, released under his artist name, Reese. I'll put a link to the song in the description. Since then, the sound has been used in a lot of electronic music genres such as drum and bass, jungle, dubstep, and bass house. A breeze bass is one of the easiest sounds to make. All you need are two sawtooth waveforms and detune them a little bit so that you get a wide wobble sound. I'm going to pitch my oscillators down an octave to get it to a low enough pitch. You can do this in MIDI if you'd like, but sometimes it's just easier to pitch it down in your synth. You'll notice that I have two notes playing at the same time. This is because I'm wanting to glide between the notes. So let's turn the number of voices down to one, set the glide to about halfway, and turn on legato mode. Looks like I need to turn the glide down a little bit. Perfect. Let's go ahead and detune one of the oscillators so you can hear what it does. You'll notice that the more detuned they are, the faster the sound wobbles. Let's go ahead and switch to sine waves so you can hear what I'm talking about better. Let's reset the tuning and bring both oscillators back up an octave so that you can hear it better. You should hear the wobble a lot clearer now. The more out of tune they are, the faster the wobble, less out of tune, the slower the wobble. If you get it completely in tune, the wobble goes away entirely. I'm not going to go into why this happens, but if you've ever tuned an instrument by comparing it to another sound that's already in tune, you'll recognize this effect. If you're curious about why this happens, it's called beating, and if you'd like to learn more, I put a link in the description below. Let's go back to our saw waves, pitch both oscillators back down an octave, and detune them. They need to be the same value, one positive and one negative, so that both oscillators are centered around the correct pitch. Otherwise, it'll sound out of tune, a little flat or a little sharp. Let's use macro 1 to control the detuning. I'm going to set the minimum value to plus or minus 8. If I move the macro knob, you'll notice it doesn't actually detune the oscillators relative to each other since they're both moving in the same direction. It's just changing the pitch. I need to have it move the tuning control in the opposite direction, which is easy to do, but it won't be exact unless I enter the exact numbers. So I'll set oscillator 1 to 0 0.3 and oscillator 2 to negative 0 0.3. Let's rename macro 1 to wobble and test it out. Now I'm going to add some unison to widen the sound and detune it further. I like to use an odd number of unison voices so that one of the frequencies stays in the center. I think it makes it sound cleaner, which is important for your low end. We'll set the unison detune to the same value for both oscillators. Sometimes you'll see a re-space made with only one oscillator with unison, but I don't like to use two oscillators because I can get a stronger wobble and have more control over it. Now let's add a filter to remove some of the high end. I'm just going to use the default 12 dB analog filter, but try out the others and see how you like the sound. A lower cutoff will give you more of a classic Reese bass sound, and a higher cutoff will give you a more aggressive sound.
I'm going to assign macro 2 to the filter cutoff and set the min and max values so that they always sound good. I'm going to rename it to filter cutoff. I'm not going to do much with the amplitude envelope, just add a little release time and increase the attack time very slightly to make it smoother and to avoid clicks. Distortion is important for a good respace. I'm going to leave it on soft clipping and give it a lot of drive, but not so much that it starts to sound bad. Let's assign macro 3 to the distortions mix knob. We're going to use these macros to fine tune the sound to help it fit into the song better. Now I'm going to add a compressor. I'll just use Vital's built-in compressor in this demo. You can set it to use the multiband compressor if you want. But in this example, I'll use a single band compressor and make some quick adjustments. Let's play it with the drums and see how it sounds. Play around with the macros to get the sound you like. Let's make some adjustments to the volume. I'm going to use the paid version of Span so that I can look at the frequency response of multiple tracks on the same plot. I've already put a high pass filter on the drums to give the bass a little more room. I can't take off too much, but I can at least clear some space for the bass's fundamental frequencies, and it really helps. Finally, let's look at the spectrum analyzer on the master bus so that I can see the relative volume between the drums and the bass. Don't forget that you can automate the macros. A cool effect is to automate the filter cutoff. I'm gonna just play around with it for a minute and just to see how it sounds. That's it for today. Be sure to hit the like and subscribe buttons and turn on the notifications bell so that YouTube will let you know when I put up the next video. I'll see you in the next one.